Hey, I'm Curly Fries, an indie game dev and creator of comedy survival horror game. Ah, there's a killer chasing me. Welcome to a mini development showcase where I show you my method of developing a game feature for the current project I'm working on. Today's project is Project Eat the Rich, a sci-fi RPG third person shooter where you play as Agent Mars, a super soldier with super speed who defects to a small resistance group whose purpose is to eliminate the top 0.1% society's wealthiest that are members of an evil cabal which obviously secretly run the world. I'm going for a story rich, fast paced, goofy and over the top sci-fi adventure for this project. If you're interested to learn more, keep an eye out for the upcoming devlog. At the time of recording, the game project was just a sandbox walking simulator because the first feature that I decided to implement is... Now what's the point of cover? Usually in cover based shooters, its purpose is to protect you from enemy fire and allow you to regenerate health whilst behind it. However, in my game the player has super speed. They can dodge bullets like a badass. But of course, their super speed is limited or they'll be too damn broken. Cover is meant to work as a last resort. When your super speed ability is on cooldown and your shield is out, how do you protect yourself? Well take cover. It also works as a gameplay alternative. Players are more comfortable shooting from cover than speeding around the area and blasting enemies well this option is there for them. Before diving in, let's figure out how this should work. Well when the player is nearby cover and they press the button to take cover, then they should go into cover. Whilst in cover they should be able to move left and right and shoot from it. Also, the character should change behaviour depending on whether in low or high cover. Lastly, they should be able to exit cover on a button press. Enemies and allies will also be taking cover. So I want the logic to be written in a way that other characters can use. Okay, now I know how it works. Time to break it down. Into steps. What do I need to do? Step 1. Take cover interaction. Detecting when the player presses the cover button and executing its corresponding logic. Step 2. Cover detection. Detecting whether the player is nearby cover and the type. Are they going into high or low cover? Step 3. Move to cover. If the player is a bit of a distance from cover, we need to programmatically move them into it. Step 4. Implement an interface. I'll explain this step in more details when we get to it, but it has to do with wanting enemies and allies to also use cover. Finally, step 6. Exit cover. Taking a player out of cover on a button press and resuming normal movement. I created a new Unity HDRP project and placed my main character Agent Mars T-posing in the scene which I modelled using Real Illusion's character creator free. For the basic movement and camera rotation, I downloaded the Unity Starter Assets third person controller and modified the player input functionality to work with my preferred method for this project, invoking c -sharp events. For anyone wondering where I got my animations from, I downloaded them from Mixamo. With the basics out the way, I then created a new script called Cover to hold the functionality. To detect player input, I created a reference to the player input component which my controls manager sets in a way. Then I added the take cover method as a listener to the player input on action triggered event. From the name, you can tell that take cover is called when the player presses a button. As the script is going to be used by enemies and Mars companions, I wrap the code in an if statement to only execute if the script is attached to a game object tagged as player. Inside the take cover method, I ensure that the name of the action triggered is take cover because the on action triggered event is called on every defined player input. Now it's time to set up the action in the input actions window. I add a new action with the name take cover and define key bindings for keyboard and console controllers to trigger this action. I attach the cover script to the player and do a quick test. And voila, it works. For detecting whether the player is nearby cover, I went with a raycast method. The ray will start from the player's position and cast in their forward direction. I create a new method called isNearCover that returns a ball depending on whether the ray cast hits cover or not. How will I know if it hit cover? Well I created a new layer called cover where I place all objects that will be used as cover. This cover layer is used as the layer mask for the ray cast. The ray cast will only look for colliders placed on this layer. I call this new method inside take cover. It will only move the player into cover if is near cover returns true. I draw a debug ray so I can see the ray cast and adjust the max distance the player can be from cover to be auto moved into it. I settled with 2.5. That's half of cover detection complete. 
onto detecting whether it's high or low cover. I'm doing this because the player's animation and character controller height must change depending on the cover's height. I create a new transform variable which will be the origin for the high cover detection breaker. Then create a new method called cover type detector. The logic is the same as is near cover, except the raycast origin and direction is based on the high cover detection transform, and it sets a ball called in high cover to true if it hits something else, false. I create the high cover detection transform as a child of the player and adjust this value only on the y axis to the minimum height that will classify an object as high cover. Basically, it should be just above Mars head's position in the high cover animation. Therefore, I'll readjust this height when I get the cover animations. Before writing the move into cover functionality, I created an interface called iCharacterMover. An interface contains a list of variables and methods that a class must use if it implements the interface. As the cover system will be attached to player, enemies and allies, and will contact each character's movement script, I have implemented this interface so the cover system can contact any class that implements iCharacterMover. So far, the iCharacterMover defines an in-cover ball and a begin move to cover method. The player controller will now conform to this interface and the cover script holds reference to the character mover. The player controller will move the player into cover whereas the cover script just passes the data it requires. So inside the cover script I add this method which tells the character mover to begin move to cover and passes it a raycast hitch point which is set in is near cover. Move character to cover is called inside take cover after the cover type has been set. Player controller's begin move to cover looks like this. It sets in cover and auto mover active to true and sets the raycast hit point as the auto mover destination. When auto mover and in cover are true, the move to cover method is called an update. This method calculates the move direction and moves the player in said direction. To get the direction irrespective of the length, I normalize the resulting vector. Once the player is within the auto mover stopper distance from the destination, the auto mover is stopped by setting its ball to false. Testing it shows that it works, but the animation is not playing. I fixed that by setting animation blend variable predefined by the Unity Starter Assets third person controller to be Mars Sprint Speed and call it an update animator method which contacts the animator and sets the speed values. While the process of auto moving the player into cover is occurring, I want to disable player input because the player shouldn't be able to attack, dodge, shoot, or move during this process. The easiest method I believe to disable player input is to create a new action map called No Controls without any actions and switch to this action map. As the controls manager oversees such things, I create two new methods within, Disable Controls, which switches to the No Controls action map if it isn't the current action map, and Enable Current Controls, which switches back to the controls used before being disabled. The switch to action map method is predefined by the player input components. I disable controls in begin move to cover and re-enable them once the player has reached their destination. Whilst the player is moving in cover, the method that detects the cover type should be running so that the player's animation can be updated instantly. I finally renamed the method to something genius, set cover type. Frankly, it's more suitable and I don't know why it took me hours to come up with that name. Anyway, in the cover script update method, I call set cover type only if the player is in cover. This ball gets set to true in move character to cover. Now I begin the logic to prohibit player movement in a certain direction if it's at the cover's corner. I create two new transform, one for the right of the player and the other for the left. Once again, I tie them to the player and set them equidistance from the player and at the same height of 0.5. I lift them up a bit to avoid them hitting any small attachment that could be part of the cover. I define a new method, in cover movement restrictor. It raycasts from both transform in their forward direction. It uses a much shorter raycast slip from the cover type detector, just in case the player is at the end of cover and there's another cover object 2.5 units in front. I went with a length of 0.3. If one of these raycasts doesn't hit cover, that means we're at the cover's corner, meaning we can aim and shoot if we're in high cover. So I update the ball can aim in the if and else section. However, we can aim anywhere from low cover, so it's set to true in set cover type. Now we need to tell the character mover if movement should be restricted and in which direction. In iCharacterMover, I define new variables and must implement in cover move direction 
and in cover prohibited direction. The cover script is going to set these values with this method, set character mover cover directions. Now I need to calculate the in cover move direction, but how? After some research, this is what I found. I need to get the normal of the object the ray cars collided with and then get the correct tangent. And what does vector3.cross do, you're probably wondering. According to the Unity docs, it returns the cross product of two vectors. The cross product of two vectors results in a third vector which is perpendicular to the two input vectors. Okay, cool. So I created a method dedicated to calculating the cover surface direction, the direction the player should move in, which takes in the hit point normal. With that calculated, I update the in cover movement restrictor method. The first argument of set character mover cover direction is the movement direction which is always going to be the cover surface direction. However, the band direction depends on whether the right or left ray cast didn't hit. If the left didn't hit, I add a minus sign in front of the direction which flips the direction from right to left. In the else section where both detectors hit something, I just pass vector 3.0 as the band direction because direction can never be vector 3.0. This will make more sense shortly. I call the method in update, then hop into the player controller, duplicate the move method and rename it to in cover move. I delete irrelevant logic and add this. I set the move direction to be the cover surface direction multiplied by move value.x, which is set by the player's input. Move value.x can only ever be 1, 0 or minus 1. Basically, it just flips the direction sign as I did with the prohibited move direction. I'm only interested in the x value which influences the left and right direction. Then if the move direction is not equal to the band direction, we move the player in the move direction, otherwise we don't do anything. Lastly, to ensure Mars has the correct rotation while in cover, I add this. I set his forward direction to be the perpendicular of his in cover move direction. In update, I only call in cover move if in cover and auto mover is disabled. It works! However, I need to stop his walk animation from playing when I hit the up and down arrow keys. I fix this by changing this line of code. If move value.x is 0, then set speed to 0. To exit cover, I need to create a new action and bind the keys. It will be the S key for keyboard. I create a new method to detect the play input for exit cover. And all it does is set in cover to false and tells the character mover to exit cover where it sets its own in cover ball to false. Next, I want to manipulate the character controller's height depending on the cover type it's behind. The controller is what detects enemy bullets. I don't want the controller at its original height when the player is behind low cover or they're gonna get hit. I set up a bunch of variables, character controller height, center and radius for both default state and crouch state when it's behind low cover. In awake, I set the default values based on the current values in the character controller. Inside in cover move, I set the character controller values depending on in high cover's value. Now it's time to bring in the animations. I download them from Mixamo and do some small editing in Reillusion's Icon 7. In Mars Animator, I set up a new cover layer with four sub-state machines. I add transitions between all sub-states by setting the balls in high cover and armed. Additionally, enter and exit cover states have their own triggers. Within each sub-state of four states, enter cover, move right blend, move left blend and exit cover. The move blends are blend trees with two animations at the speed threshold the animation should play at. The idle animations for both move blends are the same, except move left idle animation has been mirrored so Mars remains facing left once speed reaches zero whilst moving left. The two states transition between each other based on speed. Although I disable controls when moving the player into cover, the player can still move during the enter cover animation because at this point the controls have been enabled. To fix this, I create a new state machine behavior script called Disable Controls Animation. On state enter, controls are disabled and on state exit, they're re-enabled. I didn't like that Mars was so close to the wall after exiting cover. So I decided to add some animation events to the exit cover animation at the frame I want the movement to begin and end. The first event sets Auto Mover Active to True, and Mars is moved in his backward direction at his walk speed via a method called an update. The second event stops Auto Mover by setting its ball to false. I create another state behavior machine called Change Layer Weight Animation to reset the cover layer weight once the exit cover animation is complete. Some more playtesting and I decide I want to bring Mars closer to cover so it looks like he's back into the wall. 
I tried reducing the auto mover stopping distance, but the results weren't consistent, so I created a teleport character method to get Mars into the desired position. I called teleport character once Mars has arrived at his destination, and set the destination to be the Raycast hit point, so an offset is required. That offset is basically the hit point normal multiplied by the specified distance from the cover surface. From experience, the character controller doesn't like its position being changed by a transform dot position. So I disable it first, then re-enable it after. After further playtesting, I realised the length of the high cover detector should be as short as the left and right ray cast when Marl is in cover. I add this line to set cover type. If in cover is true, the length should be the same as other ray casts, else it should be the max distance from cover, and I update the ray cast to use this length. After around 12 hours and 52 minutes of designing and developing the cover system, this is the result. Not bad, eh? And that's the cover system, but let's talk improvements. As this is just a prototype phase, I only need to get the cover system to a point where it works for the prototype playtesting phase, and it does. Obviously it can be improved, and I already have some plans such as vaulting out of cover, Moving along angular cover like this, checking if cover is a suitable width and height, a cover space might be too small to be suitable, currently my cover system can't detect that. Mars interacting with enemies from cover like an in cover takedown, and automatically taking play out of cover when the camera is in front of cover. These bonus features aren't yet necessary, but I'll definitely come back to the cover system in a future video and implement them. And on that note, if you enjoyed the video make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel for more. If you like what I'm doing here or have any questions, feedback, suggestions, make sure to join my Discord and I'll definitely get back to you. The link is here and in the description. You also get the chance to vote what videos you want to see, project sneak peeks, receive notifications when I go live with game dev streams, and the chance to speak to me whenever you want. And finally, just to get you excited, here's a sneak peek of the next video. I'll be working on weapon equipping, switching and ditching. Alright, alright, alright. Take care of yourselves and have a super day. Cody Fries, logging out.